Hello, everybody. This will be a Skepticon first because the speakers asked me to be on stage with them, so I, they're automatically my favorite forever. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay. Um, our next speaker is a professional mixed martial arts fighter specializing in the art of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, wrestling, and Muay Thai. She began training in 2008 and currently has a record of 5 1 0. Uh, she's also a, uh, the first openly transgender fighter in MMA history. Please welcome to the stage, Fallon Fox. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Good to be here. Good. Good to hear. Uh, do you want to start by, I don't know, introducing yourself, saying a little bit? Or yeah. I did just introduce you, but if there's anything you want to add. Well, my name is Fallon Fox. I'm a transgender athlete and um, MMA fighter. Um, I've been training since 2008. Um, and I first had my first MMA fight in 2011. And I have um, just fell in love with the sport. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then I nailed it, is what I'm getting You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I have a series of questions here I'll be asking Fallon. And, and then if we have time, we'll open it to the floor. I do have my fancy robot computer thing to tell me where we are. OK. First question. Are you ready? Am I ready? I am ready. What is your favorite color? What is my favorite color? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have a favorite color, but I like black. I noticed. Yeah. It's a good color. Yeah, it's a good color. I, I mean, also like works. black. You like black too? Yeah. Kudos, bang Good. on, right on. Excellent. <laughs> All right, um, which makes you more nervous, facing an unfamiliar opponent or public speaking with an unknown audience? Wow, yeah. An un well, I don't know. Um, I don't think anybody out here is willing to come up here and punch me out in the face. We like have normal, a harassment so. policy. Please don't do that. <laughs> no. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I get, I get nervous uh, speaking in front of large audiences, and I also get nervous fighting. But I suppose, yeah, there isn't that much danger here, and I'm among uh, good people, good skeptics and atheists. So, yeah, feel com more comfortable speaking here. Yeah. Excellent. Later, we're gonna fight. So, if, does that fight? change your answer? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Do you have any up, uh, an upcoming bout that you're training for currently? I don't have any upcoming bouts that I'm training for currently. Um, yeah. Actually, I haven't fought in about a year. Okay. Um, I've had some problems getting fights because of the simple fact that the UFC hasn't invited me. The Invicta FC hasn't invited, hasn't invited me. Bellator hasn't invited me. These are all high-level promotions. And um, I would say it's likely because I'm transgender mm -hmm. and because of the controversy behind that. Um, so I'm stuck being a regional fighter and, um, and just stuck w within a few states. So it's hard for me to find fights um, with other female opponents and some of them um, are kind of running from me and using the tra my transgender status as a way to like, you know, steer away from me. So, um, but I hope that that'll change soon. And um, I've also had a few injuries that have kept me out of training for a few months. So, but I hope to get back in there. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, how is training different from uh, training for a bout versus just training to stay fit in between when, when you're finding your next fight? Say that again? Uh, when, you're, when you're training, is it different when you know there's a bout coming? Like, is there a different regime you have? Oh, well, yeah. Um, I, think, I think when I'm just normally training just to stay in shape and then stay competitive, um, it's a, a little bit of a lower a standard, mm -hmm. but when I'm when I'm when I'm start when I get into um, high level training for a fight camp, it really ramps up and things get like really 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 um, intense and and draining, and you have to like start start starving yourself for the fight to make weight and stuff like that. So yeah. Wow, intense. Okay, um, who would be your dream opponent? My dream opponent. I think a lot of people would know that. I think that would be Ronda Rousey. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, because she's she's a, she's the considered the top contender right now, and um, you know, and and also because she's talked a lot of shit about me. So you got something to prove, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, and she, yeah. I got something to prove. I got something to prove. Um, she says that she's says some things. What what was the thing that she said? She said I could chop my pecker off, but I still have the same bone 
structure as a man. So that's something I'd, I'd still like to get back, you know, add, uh, back to her with. So, yeah. I mean, uh -huh. which, which really doesn't make much sense, you know. Um, my bone structure really doesn't play too much into the game mm -hmm. plan. So, exactly. yeah, I got something to, to get, get back to her. So. Sounds like. Yeah. Rhonda, we're looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, what is the toughest challenge you faced in preparing to be an MMA fighter? The toughest challenge that I faced is probably the more mental aspect of, of fighting. Mm -hmm. um, you have to really be prepared. You can train and train and train physically to um, be an MMA fighter. You can put as much hard work as you can in there, but I've seen it time and time again when a fighter has gone into the cage that they just freeze up because they're not mentally prepared for it. Mm -hmm. And something that um, that you get through a lot of through a lot of training, but um, and especially for, for myself being a transgender athlete, I've had to deal with a lot of negativity from the crowds and them yelling yeah. things at me. And you, I can't go out there aggressively, like hyper aggressively and be like mad at the crowd. I have to focus on my opponent in mm -hmm. front of me and that's very hard to do yeah. when you're hearing like horrible things and like you know you know I, everyone has to deal with like like the crowd booing and yeah. and and um just being negative towards you if they're if you're like if it's not your home crowd or something like that but this is on a totally different level being a transgender fighter is something that crowds um the mma crowd in particular really um, has a, tr a trouble uh, struggling with, and they say a lot of horrible things, and that's something that I've had to struggle with um, in the cage. Is there any kind of exercises you do mentally to, to focus yourself and to go to a place where you, know, you can be prepared? I tried meditation um, <laughs> yeah. a little bit, but I think it's just it, more, more, the more experience that I've had um, in the cage dealing with that type of situation, mm -hmm. um, uh, helped prepare me for other, other bouts. So I lost one fight because I wasn't mentally prepared for it, and, and that sucked um, pretty bad. But after that, I, I, I let everything go. I just realized that I, I put myself in the position that I was going in, into like a battle, into like, um, like, like I really didn't care too much um, what the crowd thought about me, mm -hmm. like that, like, like, and, and putting that out of my mind, it, it helped me a lot in, 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 in my fight, and I smashed in my last bout, so that's pretty cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, uh, what makes someone a good fighter? What makes someone a good fighter? Well, that all depends. There's different types of fighters. Mm -hmm. um, you have those fighters that are very intelligent, but they're not that athletic, and they do very well. And then you have very athletic fighters out there who aren't that intelligent, and <laughs> they Do you want to name any names? Because, you know, <laughs> we already called out Rhonda. I think it's, why yeah, not? Yeah, 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 right, right, right. <laughs> they aren't that intelligent fighters. And then you have that fighter that just has a lot of passion, mm -hmm. and they're very gritty, and they just don't want to give up, and they just are very determined. But I think that um, what helps make a person a really good fighter is the training and the trainers that that a person has. Mm -hmm. And you have to have belief in your trainer that's training you. And my belief from my trainer came from the evidence of the, the, the other fighters that he produced. Like mm -hmm. at the gym that I, that I was training at, my trainer was sending fighters out to the UFC, to Bellator, to higher promotions, and they're doing very, very well. So you have to find a coach and a trainer who is actually putting out a good product and, and is um, very good at what they do. Excellent. Uh, why do you fight? Why do I fight? Yeah. Because I'm a raging psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I first, I first uh, started getting into fighting because I, was, I wanted to get into shape. Um, mm -hmm. I went into a gym, and uh, it, was just, it was export fitness, just a regular fitness gym. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I was doing things like running on the treadmill and lifting weight to try and get to get back in shape. And I saw a punching bag that was over in the corner. And I went over to the punching bag and I started hitting away. And I, and I, really, and I really didn't know what I was doing. I really had no technique. And there was a physical trainer there 
who happened to work at an MMA gym. And he saw that I had passion for hitting the bag. And he was like, he was like, if you really want to know how to hit this b bag properly, why don't you come with me yeah. to, an, to an MMA gym and I'll show you how to do it the right way. And when I went into that MMA gym, um, I saw a lot of people uh, there fighting and training. And I really noticed that there were a lot of female fighters there training. And they were there hitting bags and doing Muay Thai and doing Jiu Jitsu and doing wrestling. And, and they were built women, and I'd never seen anything like that um, to that extreme. You know, you always see on movies where they show, like, action, female action stars, and they lay, like, they're Barbie doll-like, and they never really, like, do the moves right, and you're wondering, like, is that, could that be really possible? Mm -hmm. You know, but, no, here it was. In, real, in reality, it was real, and I found um, a sisterhood with them. And that helped um, that helped me out a lot, and, and that's what a part of why what helped me uh, why I fight. Imagine if you hadn't been found by that trainer while you were punching the back. Do you think there was like maybe a higher power working here? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was funny. So that's a no. no. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> What advice do you have for someone who wants to become an MMA fighter? Um, really, um, you really, really have to want to be an MMA fighter, and you really have to have passion for what you want to do, and you really have to know that there's a very good possibility that you can get hurt, and you have to be, in, be willing to invest a lot of your time and energy into fighting, and it's going to take a lot of your money and it's going to take a lot out of your relationships and especially when you're cutting weight and you're going home and you're going to be cranky and you know I've lost I've lost a few relationships while while fighting because you know I've I've spent so much time and energy into it so you know, I mean it's going to take a lot of sacrifice to become a fighter especially if you're going to go on a professional level it's not something that I think personally that someone should do as like, you know, a hobby or something like that because it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of dangerous and, you know. Okay. Uh, what would be the most surprising thing to outsiders or even fans about the inside world of MMA? Probably, probably the, the amount of money that we get paid. <laughs> MMA I? fighters don't get paid that much. Mm -hmm. So say um, I fought for Championship Fighting Alliance and I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to fudge this a little bit, but... Um, I got paid 1500 just to show up and fight and 1500 to win. So that's a combination that's $3,000. Mm -hmm. You know, if I would have lost my fight with them, that $1,500 would probably go to my medical bills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, I mean, we don't get paid that much, but we don't really do it for um, the money. We do it for the passion of the sport and 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 the technique of the sport, and that's why we do it. So probably um, the amount of money that we get paid. All right. Uh, do you now enjoy your role as a public face of transgender athletics, or would you rather be just able to concentrate on your fighting career? No, I... Coming out as, as a transgender athlete has really um, hampered my career in a lot of ways. Like, mm -hmm. I've lost a lot of opportunities. Um, it's, 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 it's pretty much sucked, but I, I, I would have rather much, I, I would have rather came, came out as a transgender athlete after my career was over. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, a, 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 there was a reporter who, who was coming after me and was digging on my past and somehow found out I was transgender and was going to reveal this to the public, so that's why I had to come out. And... Um, yeah, that, that, that kind of slowed my career down. But there's a silver lining to all of this because now I get to come out and I get to talk about transgender athletes mm -hmm. and sports, and, and I think that's a positive. So, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, thank you for your bravery. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, how would you rate uh, acceptance of you as a woman by the MMA organizations and by your fellow athletes? By the MMA organizations, depend, it, it, it all depends. Regionally, um, as re and the regional promotions have accepted me because I put asses in seats, you know. So that's that's a that's a good thing. Um, 
As far as the, the top organizations, um, like I said, like UFC, Invicta, and Bellator, they really haven't been as receptive to me mm -hmm. um, in the sport. So that's not such a good thing. But And um, as far as um, my f opponents go, it's been 50-50. Mm -hmm. um, there's been some female athletes who have come out to support me um, publicly. And then, then there's right. some like Ronda Rousey who have been vicious and horrible and said a lot of mean things. So it's kind of 50-50 there. Yeah. Which, and um, as far as the, as the fans are concerned, um, it hasn't gone as well, um, especially um, since Joe Rogan came out and said a bunch of like negative comments on, online yeah. and did a podcast where he said a bunch of horrible things which uh, about um, transgender physiology, f f physiology, which were not true. Mm -hmm. So um, that kind of uh, dampered things a little bit. So, yeah. Okay. Um, are the rules governing um, acceptance of trans individuals in sports fair, or would you advocate for something better? I think the rules, uh, the rules pretty much are fair. Um, to, and it, 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 it depends on, on what organization we're talking about. So if we're talking about something like the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, mm -hmm. I think that their rules are pretty good. I think they could be tweaked a little bit. Mm -hmm. For example, um, they require full genital reconstructive surgery or sexual reassignment mm -hmm. surgery for one to compete. I think that that can be tweaked um, in a way where, say, like a male to female transgender person could be monitored and taking testosterone blockers and hormone replacement surgery and be monitored. Mm -hmm. um, they can take blood tests and to make sure that they're on par with other female athletes. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that would be expensive for the transgender individual involved, but mm -hmm. just to give that person a chance, um, I think that, that it could be tweaked a little bit. Okay. Uh, what do you think the future might be for gender desegregation in sports? Wow, are you are you talking about like co-ed, like like well, like um, will we see men, like, women, and non-binary people competing freely with each other in any time in the future? Do you think any time in the future? I I think that would be an awesome thing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, um, I'm kind of thinking of like an NBA team of like com combining men and women and non-binary people. Like, what would that look like? Awesome. Yeah, that would look awesome. <laughs> That would look awesome, but but then again, at the same time, testosterone is a hell of a thing. Yeah. So I'm just kind of wondering. Well, if both teams, you know. <laughs> yeah, if both. Yeah, then right, right, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. But but um, just wondering, like like um, um, like like how many women would be benched because of this simple fact mm -hmm. that you know testosterone like would give the males more of an advantage and you know that type of thing. But I think it'll be totally awesome thing uh, to happen. Uh, what can everyone in this room do to support trans people in sports? I think um, education is key. So like mm -hmm. when people talk about transgender athletes and transgender physiology and um, they say that we have advantages in the case of male to female transsexuals or um, disadvantages in the, in the case of female to male um, transgender individuals um, that just speak up and say something about it. Don't be silent about it. And, and, and um, I think that's, that's the key thing right there is education. It can go a long way because not that many people know about, about that, about those facts. Okay. Uh, if you could be any sort of dinosaur, which would you be? Oh. <laughs> I think I'd be a Spinosaurus. Good choice. Yeah, a good choice, right? Because yeah. they're like twice the size of a Tyrannosaurus they were, right? Totally. And back then in the day, I mean, in such a violent atmosphere, I think I'd like to be like at the top of the top of the pile there. Definitely. So. You have the passion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a lot of religion or superstition in MMA? Um, I haven't seen a lot of religion and, supersti and superstition in training. Um, in, my tra in my training camps at all, but I, I've seen it um, in, in fights, mm -hmm. uh, people coming out there, you know, before their fights, you know, doing the whole Ross thing and, to, oh, Lord, please, Jesus, help me beat this man up. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just quite odd of a thing to, to say. I mean, I'm, just, I'm pretty sure Jesus wants that. But <laughs> Maybe he does. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, which, and which is pretty odd, especially when they lose. But yeah, so I've seen I've seen a lot of it in MMA. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you have a preferred brand of athletic clothing that you use or wear? My favorite brand of clothing is Sinful. Yeah. What was it? Sinful. Sinful. Yeah. Nice. I don't believe in sin, but you know, I just like to, to wear it to piss off the fundamentalist, I guess. That, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this was not, so this question was not submitted by me totally. Um, okay. what, which Rocky movie is your favorite? Actually, I haven't, I haven't really gotten into the Rocky movies. <laughs> okay. Just, just don't say five, I, and it's fine. I, I, haven't, I haven't watched. I haven't. I have. I think. I think I've watched like a few when I was younger, and really didn't get into it that much. Okay. So, but I think one my one of my favorite movies, favorite boxing movies, favorite fighting fighting movies, was Girl Fight, mm -hmm. um, with Michelle Rodriguez, mm -hmm. and that yes. really that really um, inspired me, and and helped uh, inspire me to get into MMA and to fighting. Great. Um, how does a seemingly violent and traditionally male-dominated sport, such as MMA, empower women? It's empowering to me because um, I see how, how that, that women can be just as skilled as, as the men can be. We may not be as, as, as quick or as, as strong or have the endurance, but we can do the same things. And for me, it's also, I used to be scared to walk the streets at night. Mm -hmm. um, that was that was something that that I, that I was fearful of, and um, in training I just I, I learned and got so good at training that any average male that would to come up, that would to come up to me in the street I would pretty much kick his ass if he was my size. Nice. So, you know that just um, it's a, it's very empowering to know that I'm on par and that I can handle myself. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, I, in your bio on your website, you talk about how MMA has helped you own your body. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Because I know as women, there's a lot of pressure on what your body looks like and what it does. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. Um, MMA, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel that like I have an athletic body and, mm -hmm. and um, that the perception out there is to be like a Barbie doll type figure of a person mm -hmm. and... and, and not to be an aggressive woman, and mm -hmm. I feel that MMA has empowered me in that way, and I feel comfortable in my own skin, you know, just being the powerful, aggressive, athletic woman that I am, so. Excellent. I think we have time for a few questions from the audience. We have a microphone set up over here, so if you could please walk over and, and speak into it, if you have any questions you'd like to add. Anyone? It's right over there. My lovely assistant, Bly, the shall assist you with the microphone. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, have there been any uh, difficulties that you've uh, encountered with liberals that maybe were kind of surprising? And in kind of more generally, uh, what can we do better? Or what's a perceived area that we could improve? I missed the last part of what he said. Um, is there anything that uh, this community here, maybe like a broader liberal community, can do better? Anything you perceive as just not being good enough? Because it's it's easy for us to imagine, you know, right wingers and conservatives and all the nasty stuff they say. But is there anything like surprising, negative that you've experienced from the left or liberals? I was I was I, I've noticed a lot of atheists and a lot of skeptics have come out against me and, and not understood my position as being a transgender athlete. Um, um, yeah, that's been, that's been something that I've noticed a lot, especially online and on Facebook, um, um, which I try not to look at, but I do anyway. But I mean, it's, it's, it's something that I think um, people need to think about a little bit more, yeah. Thank you. What was the rationale for not coming out as transgender when you initially started fighting? The rationale for me not coming out when I an initial I wanted to I just I didn't want to have to deal with the pressure of that and I, I felt that um, it might limit my possibility my my 
the, possib the, the possibility of me getting fights. So, and it did when I, when, I event when I did come out, when I was found to come out. I mean, if I had come out and said um, in the beginning, um, I probably wouldn't have gotten any fights. So that was my rationale. Hi, Hello. I'm um, I'm almost sixty years old, and I don't I ride a bike. That's the only athletic thing that I do. If I wanted to take up a mixed martial art, which one would you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> There's a Br Brazilian jiu-jitsu studio in my hometown. I was going to say Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Brazilian Brazilian jiu-jitsu you can do throughout your lifetime. It's low impact. It's, it's not hard, you're not getting punched in the face and you can roll around on the ground. It's very good. I've seen people um, do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu until they're like, mm, wow, until they're like their 70s. So that's something that, that you could do. Um, actually, when, when I first started training, I was in my 30s and I was rolling around with a 45 year old woman who was whipping my ass. <laughs> So, I mean, you can do it for a long time. So, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu yeah. Thank you. Uh -oh, Don't be shy. wearing a tap-out shirt. <laughs> I just realized I was actually wearing this shirt as I was in line. So, uh, I guess I am a fan, but uh, I wanted to say that uh, I respected you. Can I put this in here? I respected you because... Uh, you're, you're, you're a, a skeptic. I respect you because you're transgender. And certainly don't let anybody take anything away from you. Uh, your hard work, for instance. Um, but, however, uh, being an ex-bodybuilder myself, uh, I understand genetics and uh, hormones and Can things like little? that. I understand genetics and hormones a little better than most people. <clears throat> um, do your opponents see uh, your you know, if you still have your manhood, so to speak, uh, the testosterone, do they still see, do they see that as anabolics, like in the same category as anabolic steroids, so to speak? Yeah, I think uh, you need to leave. No, it was a legitimate question. Yes, but it was rude, so you need to, you need to leave. Oh, I didn't know, I, I didn't know. I'm, do they I'm see not you in the same category? That's okay. The category of No, we're done. Next question. I didn't know if you were on any Leave, blockers. please. Oh, okay. Can we have him escorted, yeah. please? Anyone, Blythe? Yeah. I'll, I'll walk out. I, I didn't know Then walk. A walk, okay. sir. Use your legs. Yeah. They're right there. I if was, you would please calm down, we have another question to ask. I wouldn't mind answering the question. I, 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 I suppose the question, I, I didn't fully understand it because he didn't get to finish. But, I mean, I suppose he's, he's asking about testosterone and, and all of this. So um, what happens is over, the, 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 over the, a period of time, over two years, um, the, the testosterone, my, my, t my testosterone is lower than, any, than just about any of these women in this, in this room's testosterone levels are. So, um, yeah, so, and, and over, my, my musculature has decreased for over the years, and so there you have it. So I'm, I'm on par with a lot of, of my female comma, uh, counterparts in MMA. So, was that, did that answer your question? You don't know you don't know what the levels are because you haven't looked into it, right? Yes. Right. So you need to look into it. And that's that's part of the problem is that's part of the problem is the ignorance behind it. And we've been trying to put that out. Um, we we've, we've been trying to put that out there, like the our artist, my our testosterone levels. So I'm lower than any other my testosterone levels are lower than hers, lower than hers, lower than hers, lower than any of these women in this room. And it's been that way for years. And I've, I've had gender reassignment surgery and been on hormones since I was 30. 
and I'm almost 40 now. So, yeah. Uh, this is kind of a two-parter and they're not related, but I wanted to ask, have you ever taken judo classes? Never taken judo, taken okay. wrestling. Wrestling is my forte. Okay, yeah. um, and the second question is, because you've been out of training for a while, what do you do as another source of income? Because I know it's not a very lavish lifestyle to go and fight, but in what way do you remain financially stable? I've done, I've done all kinds of odd jobs. I've been <laughs> a school bus driver, I've been a diesel tech mechanic, and right now I'm being supported by my partner, so yeah. What advice would you give to other transgender athletes? Wow, what advice would I give to other transgender athletes? Stick to your guns and don't let um, the ignorance, you know, of people who don't understand certain things about um, your physiology or um, just being trans in general dissuade you and just keep going for it. I, I, I follow some of the conversations and partake in some of the conversations on Facebook. How do you respond to people who basically make the claim that you fight because you are a man? Even though the fact that you didn't even find fighting until after you were a woman and have only trained since you were a woman, that you've always been a woman as a fighter, how do you deal with, I know, the testosterone issue and the bone density issue? How do you it's like people think you only are a fighter because you have the advantage because you were once a man. How do you say you're only a woman as a fighter? I mean, is, I'm not sure how to, if I'm asking that correctly, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, kind of, it's kind of confusing, but I suppose, I mean, um, both men and women fight. Both men and women are fighters, so it doesn't make much sense to, to, for someone to think that um, I would be a fighter just because I was once male. You know, so and, it's and it's do. It's, it's kind of a ridiculous. It's, it's, it it's a ridiculous like like assumption to have. So I mean, in that way, it's just it's just it's just fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. And one more question: um, Before you came out, did you ever have any issues with being an out atheist? As a fight. Before you came out as transgender, did you ever have an issue as being an atheist as a fighter? Did anyone ever give you? flack for that. Nobody asked me if I was an atheist <laughs> before I came out and then then I came out to I believe a GQ magazine and I told them I was atheist and then like you know people were like you know asking me questions about that so yeah. Thanks. Yeah. This actually kind of piggybacks on Tom's last question. Which was hardest to come out as trans or atheist for you? Wow, um, they're probably about equal. I think atheist was probably harder, you know, um, dealing with my family because my family, I came from a family of evangelical Christ Christians, you know, the crazy kind of Christians speaking in tongues. I can do it right now. <laughs> yeah. Speaking gibberish. You know, that type of thing. So, I mean, that was really rough for me. And then coming out as trans was um, almost equally as rough with them. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, about, they're about the same. Yeah. Um, what do you think is, uh, is something that would uh, help trans individuals and uh, issues with visibility in both athletics and society as a whole? I, I, I believe more transgender people coming out and, 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 and being in sports and, and just being themselves. Um, right now our um, lack of visibility is hurting us, but, but right now we have um, fortunately, fortunately people like Caitlyn Jenner and Laverne Cox and myself 
are coming out and, and there's like a lot more visibility. I think once people start understanding that we're humans and that we're the women that we say we are or the men that we say that we are, then things will get a lot more better and, you know, it's just visibility. Was there any trouble trying finding a good camp being transgender? Oh, I didn't. I didn't have much trouble finding a, a good camp being a transgender because I, I wasn't out then. I didn't. I didn't come out. So I was training for years um, in gyms. Um, wow, since two thousand and eight until about two thousand and twelve or two thousand. Yeah, before, before anyone knew I was transgender. So that's got to say something, right? You know, about, about me being an athlete in the sport. If no one knew that I was transgender the whole time, they saw me as another woman and I was performing as all the other women were. That's got to say something, so. Where would you say that healthcare is at in our, in our country for transgenders, and what's the best way the average people can help to improve the situation? You say healthcare? Yep, yeah, just in general, healthcare. That's a good question. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not so sure on that subject, but I know that there are some places in Chicago where transgender people can go, like the Howard Brown Center. Um, but those are like in, mostly in like large cities where people can go to like get transgender care. Um, but I think, and, and I, I think I really have to look more into, in, more into detail into that. I'm not so sure if, like, um, the new Medicare standards will cover transgender individuals with surgery and hormones and, and things of that nature, so. Thank you. Yeah. Um, beyond doing a simple Google search, which I think uh, many people can do here, um, including the gentleman that was up here earlier asking a fairly uninformed question, I think. Um, is there some, uh, some research or some resources online that um, people in the audience can use as uh, things to link people to or just give people information on, in terms of like uh, transgender athletes um, to answer the simple questions that I think, like I said, could be answered with an easy Google, Google search. Um, I'm thinking maybe like the, the uh, Olympic, I think the Olympic Committee came out with some a statement or at least research based on, um, based on research for transgender athletes. Is there sites, information that uh, we can point people to uh, that will help us uh, I be think better advocates? Yeah, I think I think there are very few, but I think there's there's some like transathletes.org, I think, or transathletes.com. I can't remember one of the two. Look those up. It's got a little information there, but I, I think there needs to be a lot more because I think that's part of the problem is that like the information isn't getting out there online for people to see um, um, about the, 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 the medical physio, 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 physiological aspects of transgender people in transition. I think there needs to be a lot more of that. I don't know how that could be set up and I don't know why it's not been done so far. Hello. First of all, thank you for speaking and sharing your story. I know it's a space, a space of vulnerability, sharing time and time again, and I think your words are very powerful. Um, can you speak a little bit about um, being a person of color, being a non-believer, being a person of color, and if you want to touch on being trans and being a person of color, what your experience is, and also, too, for folks that are allies or accomplices, like kind of some tips to do better, like the gentleman asked earlier. Yeah, being an atheist and being a transgender woman of color is a very lonely place. <laughs> Look, I see like one, two, like those are just, they get they're getting out, you through like, I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of rough. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm wondering why that is, why we don't have that many more skeptics and atheists who are of color. And um, I'm happy when I meet other people <laughs> of color. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a struggle, especially with um, family. Um, and things of that nature, so yeah.
There he is. Hello. Hello. Uh, so with all of this said and everything that I'm um, coming out is trans, atheist, everything going on, would you say on a positive note that anybody, any race, religion, gender, whatever, lack of religion can do anything the fuck they want if they put in the hours, the time, and dedication to do it? And uh, really all of that, anything that uh, holds you back, is well, the only thing holding you back is the bullshit excuse that sells you from taking what you want. And how would I... Oh, I the only thing that stops anyone from having what they want is the bullshit story they tell themselves that stops them from having it. Um, would you agree? Did you understand that? Yeah, I think he's asking if you know, what's keeping you from achieving your goals is not what you are, what you're perceived to be, but your attitude about it. Yeah, the, well, that, that's for the most part that's true, unless you have some kind of disability or something like that or, that, or something that can hold you back. I mean... Yeah, just go for your dreams and, and you know, um, just push forward and, and hope for the best. <laughs> you coming out as transgender, has that just stopped your career completely? Has it stopped my computer completely? I don't know. It slowed it down a lot. Yeah. It slowed it down a lot. I, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to have, a, if, if I'll ever fight again. I'm trying to, so. Keep on kicking ass. I'm trying, man, I'm trying. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask you about fighting and, and what makes a good fight. All I do is run, so I know what a good run feels like, but fighting's always been a little bit, I enjoyed kickboxing, I did a little bit of that, but I was just right wondering on. what, apart from winning, obviously, what makes a fight a good fight? What makes a fight a good fight? Um, I, th I think w the, the best fights are the fights where, where the two opponents have respect for each other and they go in there and they give it all that they have. Um, I really don't like the fights where um, the two fighters are, are, are really um, talking trash about each other too much. I've had a, a few of those, you know, and I just, I like it when it's a respectful fight and there's a lot of action in the fight and you know it, it's 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 re, it's a respectable fight. Sure. Those are Thank my you. favorite fights. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. If look at you, just as we need you, come on up. Um, I've done a little bit of fencing before, and there's been times where I uh, where I can look at a person and know this is going to be tough or I'm going to get my butt handed to me. Do you have similar uh, things when you're uh, walking to a ring, when you see a person, do you kinda know maybe I'm in over my head or is this gonna be an easy cakewalk or what, what, what are those things that you can, what can you read about those things in a fight? What are those specific things? What can I read about? I always try and go into to a fight with a mental, um, thought that I'm, that, that I'm better than that person. I mean, I mean, you almost have to. I mean, once you start feeling that, like that person, like that person has an edge, you've already lost the fight. Um, you've already lost the fight. So you have to go in there like believing in yourself. I mean, that's, hard, that's kind of hard to do, especially if you have an opponent that like has a lot more um, experience than you. And I've been in some of those fights, but you have to have some kind of like belief in your training, and if you've put enough training in, then then you should like you know have to like you know believe in yourself that you can do it. That's that's the best way that I found that I can that I, that I've made it through my fights. Okay, yeah. um, thank you so much, Fallon, for being with us. <laughs>